So hello friends. So today we are at IIT Kanpur uh, in the with Professor Indra Sekhar Sen uh, from the Earth Science Department. Welcome to your media platform, sir. Thank you so much. So, uh, sir, this session is basically related to all the basically the research options available in the form of uh, for the students who are going to apply for the Earth Sciences. Let us suppose in the upcoming future mm -hmm. for various domains. So, my very first question for you is, sir. So, please tell us about your academic and research background, sir. Okay, so I did my bachelor's and master's from Calcutta, uh, from Jadavpur University, and then my PhD from Florida, and then my postdoc from uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in USA, and then in 2014 I moved back to India and, and joined the Department of Earth Sciences uh, in, in IIT Kanpur, and uh, now you know I'm an associate professor in the institute. Uh, I'm primary. I'm I'm a geo geologist by training, but I you know I specialize in geochemistry. Uh, that is the application of different chemical tracers right. who understand earth surfacial processes how in different component interact how the environment behaves so look you know using chemistry as a tool to understand earth resources and earth processes that's what my specialization is so so what kind of research facilities have been created over here under this earth science department sir in the field of research so we in our department we have real a lot of state of the art facilities uh, so earth science has you know like many sub discipline we have geophysics we have geochemistry we have petrology we are structural uh, so i am a geochemist so uh, you know so i have developed a, a state of the art mass spectrometer lab mass spectrometry lab and the clean lab facility so here what we can do is we can measure really trace level inorganic contaminants which are level at a very low level but which are uh, kind of very toxic some of them are carcinogenic uh, so that we can detect them from environmental samples in say for example in soil in water in drinking water in fresh waters in any sort of samples uh, and that can be from geological to environmental to any other resources uh, so yeah so those are the instruments that we mostly use uh, it's called uh, mass spectrometers okay right sir and what about the lab facilities sir research facilities means how this uh, research facilities in the field of this earth science if we compare this iit kanpur facilities with the global level how we compare that sir so for example the 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 instruments that we have these are all state of the art gold standard equipment so you will get the same equipments you know wherever you go so we are we are can be compared to any leading global institution so these are the essentially the same right sir and what is the background required to apply for this earth science department what means what type of student basically can do the research in this earth science field sir so usually we have a bsms program so right, after sir. you clear your je you can you know get admitted to a, you know to iit kanpur through your je uh, we have integrated as i said bsms 5 years program and i think you can come to you know it's it's basically a multidisciplinary field where physicist can come chemist can come civil engineers can come come uh, so we have geophysics program we have geochemistry program geology program so it's really broad A anyone can come in and, and and you know apply different tools to understand uh, you know the earth's processes my next question is a very very important sir that uh, students basically when it comes to the higher studies level some students having the basically knack to go to the research domain only but there are so many students who want to basically go for the higher studies for some platform or they want to use it as a in the form of job directly mm -hmm. so my question is sir how much focus students have on the research related to the world real world issues oh i think that i would say huge mm -hmm. because there are now two things which are very uh, topical one is you know machine learning artificial intelligence and other is sustainability and when we talk about sustainability it is basically sustainability of mother earth so our resources our you know food security our you know water resources so it has everything to do with earth science yes. or geology whatever you you call it so from job perspective this is a immense job prospect you talk about petroleum industry where we are using all the hydrocarbons from oil industry from coal industry mining industry is a huge recruiter you know yes. because all these things steel and all this ultimately comes from mineral resources and so those are the you know the mining and the you know the uh, kind of uh, exploration industries yes. but at the same time they are also polluting the environment yes. so there yes. is also a, a huge uh, you know a demand in uh, in understanding you know the, the what is the fate of this uh, you know materials 
So from remote sensing point of view, uh, from climate change point of view, from sustainability point yes. of view. So you have multiple job uh, you know, uh, prospects now. Right, sir. Sir, uh, this, this question is that about that which students find very difficulty in finding their research areas. So can you, sir, please suggest some probable research area for prospective researchers related to your this uh, field of our science? Well, there are many such research domains. I can only tell few of them that we are working yes, on. Yes, sir. So my research group is uh, actively working on the Himalayan glaciers. Right. Uh, because you know these glaciers are uh, major water reserves yes, for, for the entire Indian subcontinent because right. these glaciers are the source of all these rivers in the northern India. So if they disappear, the rivers will run so-called dry. Right, so we work on them, uh, work on those aspects that how you know the ice accumulates, how they are melting. If they are melting at a given rate, what would be the downstream consequences on the rivers? So that is one aspect on the on the water side. So also we are working a lot on this called enhanced rock weathering, because this is a new technology and there is a lot of uh, you know startups, lot of industries which are kind of coming up. So how it works is when we use uh, basalt powder on ground, it takes CO2 uh, and it's a way of removing CO2 from the atmosphere. So you know CO2 yes, is yes, a greenhouse yes, gas. Yes. So there are multiple aspects that we are working on from conserving your water resources to you know combating climate change. And of course, there are environmental issues that you can, you can, you know, we are working on uh, say fluoride contamination, arsenic contamination, all those standard problems. And this is a domain, sir, where multiple, as you told, that multiple domain students can apply for that. So typically, what skills you see in the prospective research student who are going to work under your mentorship or in this particular department? For yeah, I think for any any research, you need to have a good sound uh, fundamentals of you know, physics, chemistry and math. So if you have good grasp on them, you can you, you will easily cope up. Whatever branch they are basically are having. They are so again, sir, uh, if somebody wants to basically apply under you only, let us suppose under your mentor mentorship. So how can he they prepare well your, yourself themselves to basically apply under you? So they can grab this opportunity, sir. Yeah. So I think this answer is not really straightforward because if I look for intelligence, doesn't mean that the intelligence student will get in because still they have to you know clear many sort of. Uh, exams yes. which are there, in, yes. which can be your, if they are getting an entry in masters, then it's a, there's a jam. If it's a, after 12, it's JE. For PhD, you have NET, GET. So all these things already take care of your broad spectrum. But then when they shortlist, I really try to interact with them to see whether they have real interest in doing research, how they think, how they tackle problem. But that's also equally important yes. rather than clearing those exams yes. and, and because yes. research is something uh, a topper may not be a great researcher True. Uh, and a great researcher may not be a topper. So, True. you know, you, it, so it's a many, uh, many aspect that I really try to look for uh, before maybe selecting uh, particularly like PhD students, master students. So they have this, you know, this thirst to, to kind of go f to, you know, solve unknown things. Yes, yes. Know. That approach the is curiosity, required. you know, no, curiosity that's what the drives, approach. approach yeah. is also being checked. Very important, there. yes. Uh, because, because whatever question you are going to ask, let us suppose in the interview, that those will be very new for them but yes. what approach they are basically exactly, following exactly if, that is the if they don't know the answers okay yes. of course we don't know if you ask me a question i will also know but i can also try to figure out that okay yes. how do i solve this uh, you yes. know, that's i think very important rather than mugging up something and and, and you know answering a definition and and this thing like uh, you're saying that uh, normally when people start doing the things then only they will identify able to identify that are they are into the research domain they should go for the job or let us suppose marketing or teaching so if somebody want to go for the research domain let us suppose if how they identify at the bachelor level that okay i want or my interest is lying in the research domain how they identify at the bachelor yeah level i think also. i would suggest that maybe they should do few internships yes, uh, from a good lab or from a good research organization who does does r and d uh, so that will give them enough exposure of okay how research work is done so i think that is the only way uh, I think every student must explore yes. rather than just going with the market trend and yes. okay, you know, everyone is doing something and I also have to do it. Maybe I'm not meant to do it, but still people kind of, you know, the student follow uh, what is trendy. Yes. But maybe what's trendy for you may be not trendy for me, but if I simply follow the trend, I will end up. And then after t five years, you repent. And then it's too, you know, of course, it's, it's never too late, 
but again you have to come back and, yes. and again start fresh so i think the more they explore i think better the, it is because uh, with uh, a lot of you know exploration they will kind of figure out where is the niche area that they would yeah. like to really yeah. do and where they look uh, you know uh, themselves in the next 10 years yes sir. as you told sir a topper cannot be a good researcher or a low level student can also be a good researcher yeah, absolutely so uh, other than the it students so if anybody wants to basically do the internship let you I, as you told that they should explore the things so any internship opportunities available in the it kanpur for other than the it students let us suppose in your department only sir yeah we do uh, you know it's uh, yeah of course there are m- multiple requests that we give particularly during the summer but that's an individual uh, there is no such organized program for it's right, sir but as a as a individual pi of a lab or a individual faculty and all my colleagues they can uh, you know if they have project and if they want to take a intern for 3 months explore we have the right to do it so we do take uh, a lot of students uh, coming from different universities state universities you uh, know in institute industry who come and spend couple of months uh, and do a internship and, and, and leave and the procedure to apply for that let us suppose if so there is no such procedure you just directly write to the uh, uh, individual professor or the pers- person with whom you want to work right. and if he or she has a opening and then, and if they, he they or she feel like that. they will respond and they will uh, take we are always looking for good students to come and uh, spend uh, time in the lab learn something and also we also learn something from them right right sir and sir uh, what are the Uh, you talked about the job opportunities uh, through this particular domain so what are the entrepreneurial opportunities available to students related to your academic and the research domain again that's also a huge opportunity right now and that's the one industry i just gave you an example is this enhanced rock weathering industry where it's actually people are taking basalts which are of no use but still there is a lot of query it's almost like you're taking something which is not required but still you're mining and you're putting on the ground to take co2 out of it i know many of uh, uh, my uh, you know a lot of acquaintances who have actually made startup out of it and anything to do with environmental mineral resources mining remote sensing because now uh, you know remote sensing is also a very important tool because the amount of uh, uh you know scanning that we are doing it's it's easy to do it from space of course ground validation mm-hmm. has to be done so every every sector has a uh, you know there's an opportunity for uh, doing entrepreneurial activities from its mining exploration climate change water resources whatever wherever you feel that you you know you are interested in up to the btech level up to the bachelor level everybody is into into the academics mm-hmm. but when they do, go to the masters level or the phd level mm-hmm. it is about the research mm-hmm. so how basically the shifting from academic to research how student can be easily do that shifting from academic to research sir yeah i think that's a, i think that's also you have to have some good internships uh, if you have cracked some of the good internship you will clearly uh, see whether you get you see a value in doing research and then after that when you are doing a masters maybe a good masters thesis a good masters thesis will certainly you know put you on the right yes. place to do a yes. very good phd yes. from from you know from solving a cutting edge problem but i think the the internship at a bachelor's level will give some exposure a masters thesis will kind of set you up and phd is actually where you will kind of really try to solve problems you're on mm. your own uh, with help your supervisor you do something really meaningful because you have more time uh, in the end sir anything you want to tell to the prospective students sir oh Especially i for the higher studies lugen yeah i think higher study is kind of you have to be patient you know uh, it takes time but i think the reward is always uh, sweet i think i, I know a lot of our btech student whom you know i have worked with and they of course join industry because you know initially the the pay packages and all yes. it's very lucrative but after 5 10 years they repent that there is no growth or i'm not happy or there is nothing innovative creative and then they think of coming back uh, but in terms of academics i think it's slow uh, but steady yes and of course you know you know that the end the slow and steady wins the race so yes. uh, both are good but this will have a, a, a you know the time to kind of achieve something is a little more so you have to be absolutely patient and keep on trying and don't let your curiosity go down so you have to keep on working and i'm sure the reward will be nice right sir thank you professor so i think the questions are very very relevant especially because at this time students are looking for the 
admissions into the higher studies and this i think this session is going to be very much helpful for them to take the decision that which domain they should enter they should go for the higher studies or the job these type of sessions are very very important for them thanks professor thanks for the time sir yeah thank you so much and thank you for inviting me right sir thank you thank you so much